L.A. chaser and police officer in the loosest sense of the word. State Patrol Lieutenant Eric Roski on the three Yeah, we got a good one today. Joining us from the Minnesota State Patrol, it's Roski P. Coltrane. Good morning, Eric. Morning. How are you guys doing? Doing great. You know, you've Very got the perfect. Well. You've got the perfect name to chant at a Golden Gopher sporting event. Eric Roski. <laughs> you know, it's perfectly uh, timed out like that. Oh wow! I never even picked up four on that. Four syllables, man. Mm-hmm. If you got a four syllable, how's yeah, it going? That's my calling. Yeah. It's going well. All you right. know, we've had a pretty rough couple of weeks. A lot of pedestrians and motorcyclists getting killed, unfortunately. Yeah. Pretty bad. Hasn't but, this uh, been close to a record year, if not a record year, for motorcycle deaths? At yeah, least thus it has far? been. It's uh, it just especially in the last probably three weeks. It seems like you know almost every day you're seeing one uh, go down in one way or another. Are you chalking that? up to speed and not being safe with a helmet you know every crash is unique you know we have some where people are pulling out in front of them we had one in Mankato the other day where a person pulled out from a stop sign in front of a motorcyclist on highway 22 Uh, we've had you know ones that are just single vehicle or single cycle crashes where people lose control so and you'd say the same thing about all these pedestrian deaths you never know that you know yeah you know they're all unique in their own way I guess it's just a reminder with uh, fall and everybody back to school kind of getting back into the routine to just keep an eye out for those pedestrians and and really uh, like we tell the pedestrians anytime you're in a crash with a vehicle you're gonna lose so right or wrong you got to watch out for yourself yeah what happened to that trooper that got rear-ended was it yesterday uh, yesterday. Near Crookston? Uh, oh, over last night. Was it, or was it last night? Yeah, I'm not sure. It's, yeah. it's Tuesday is what it said. Yeah, we had a trooper uh, involved in a crash when he was turning, uh, after he turned around to go after a speeder. So I, I don't have a lot of details on that. I know the trooper had some bumps and bruises, but I think the person that uh, crashed into him had some more significant injuries, unfortunately. That's not good. Oh, no. Joining us this morning in studio from a Solar Shield. <laughs> Is uh, Mark Jury. Good morning, Mark. Morning, guys. Mark, Appreciate nice you to coming see you in again. here. Uh, you know, for the last several years, it seemed like every time Roski would come in, we'd uh, get a, a window tint question. Yeah, it was <laughs> kind of an ongoing bit where at first they were interesting and then they were frustrating because it seemed like Roski answered every possible question on window tinting. They still would roll in. And then after a while, it became sarca- sarcasm for the most part that people were asking us so many questions about window tint. But uh, I understand you and Josh had a, a meeting once, and, uh, and and you wanted to come in and maybe say a few things. Uh, Josh, what, what happened when you guys met? Well, we, we had an opportunity to meet once at Walzer Mazda, and we were talking about window tint because I wanted to get some work done, you know, and you did some work for us. And uh, I was fascinated. You know, I had told him about kind of the joke it became on our show, mm-hmm. and I had no idea how much information was out there on window tint and how much you know, Mark, about window tint. I mean, I'll tell you what, it made me want to get up and lobby or something. You're a very persuasive speaker, and yeah, I, I know you have a lot to say. Uh, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty uh, high-tech industry. A lot of, I like to dispel a lot of the falsehoods. One of the problems with the frustration of your callers, I'm sure, is that Minnesota does have one of the most restrictive tent laws, arguably the most restrictive tent law in the country. Uh, many other states allow you to go darker with film for a lot of the reasons, safety, security, privacy. Um, it, there's just so much about that out there that, that nobody ever talks about. It's always, you know, everybody refers to officer safety when, in fact, film has a lot more to offer to the, the, the citizen of Minnesota as far as safety goes. You think we'd be allowed more window tint in this state since so many of us are fish belly white? <laughs> well, and so I wanted to ask you real quick. So you do a lot of lobbying. I mean, you have uh, a couple of websites I'm sure you want to talk about. But what what is the response you're getting from the government as to uh, why the law is the way it is and why they won't change it? Most of the pushbacks we've got is from the State Patrol. They, they think it's uh, officer safety issues is what they typically bring up. Um, uh, I would argue that fact that there is no additional harm to law officers, whether the, if there's a 35% film on versus a 50% film, which is really all the industry is looking for. Um, 47 other states allow this film on vehicles. They don't have any additional, uh, you know, officers being harmed from out behind dark tinted windows. In fact, no officer that I'm aware of has ever been shot from out behind dark tinted windows. So it's it's kind of a fallacy that, that uh, 
Sure. You mean, you mean a falsity? A falsity. <laughs> well, fallacy works. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. I thought Gotta that was a dirty up. word. No, no, I'm sorry. no. That's, you're thinking no, fallacy. No, you're thinking flaccid, yes. Ah, my Fallic. mind's in the gutter. No, no, no. You're Rosky, fine. Rosky, what, what, what are the concerns of the State Patrol on window tint and the safety for you guys? Well, I, I think that we should uh, be straightforward with this from the start. This, this is about uh, private industry who wants to increase their business and make more money. And our concern is about the safety of not only the public, but the law enforcement officers in the state of Minnesota. Well, how the public? Like, how would uh, the window tent laws, how are they protecting us? Well, they reduce the visibility of the driver. Yeah, that um, is that, true. I suppose at night if you're... That's why you're not allowed to tent your windshield, which is the greatest source of light going into a vehicle. So, Wait, is that true anymore, Mark? I mean, with the... It's, it's actually not. It's a, if, if the, uh, the Federal Safety Administration has done extensive testing in regards to this, and actually... You increase visibility for the driver in oper operation. Of their, you know, so their you're going to increase. So then why don't we tint the front windshield if that's going to increase visibility? Many states are changing their laws to allow front windshields to be tinted for the <laughs> exact same reason. All what about right. when you reduce though. the amount of glare let that me, comes in the vehicle, you your eyes are able to focus on the things happening around you so and what, actually makes what, your reaction time quicker. Win, what does window tint do that sunglasses don't? Sunglasses doesn't do anything for yielding glare. Yielding glare is when light refracts off of other things around you through the side, through the glasses themselves, uh, actually enabling your eyes to adjust quicker. You essentially can damage your up, you know, peripheral vision, so you don't see, say, a motorcycle coming up as you're sitting at a stop sign. Uh, a large percentage of car accidents are caused, as the officer knows, by glare. People just don't see them because the sun's in there. No, actually, we, glare is not a leading factor. It's an attention speed, uh, uh, driver impairments. Is that, so. Where would you say glare is as a factor then? I mean, is that something? I've never know. heard it as a factor or even a significant factor. Oh, really? I, when you're driving in the late afternoon or in the early morning, yeah, I, can barely see, I can barely see in front of me. Well, yeah, but right. compared, to the others that he, but compared to the others that he mentioned, I, I would guess it's nowhere in that uh, neighborhood. No. Sure. Right. Well, you know, Mark, well, something else you brought up, and again, this was a couple of years ago, so I don't remember all the details. I was impressed with the amount of knowledge you have on the topic, obviously, as a business owner, but was uh, safety as far as you get in an accident, and I believe the, the example you brought up was, let's say you have a baby in the back, they'd mm -hmm. be, they're going to be more safe because it strengthens the glass? Well, it does. It gives shatter resistance to the glass, but by reducing the, the glare as well, it also protects the vision of the baby. And we've legislated laws to turn our children backwards facing a giant back window in the vehicle, but you don't allow them to tint the window to protect, the, protect them from the sunlight. Well, they can wear a hat. I uh, would say the same thing child, about a canine unit. Carriers, dog could probably child. put hats on our canine units well, as well. No, we can't. But what? They find it Wait interesting. Wait a minute. Now, this is going to be fun. Hats now we're, for dogs. Are we, we're putting hats on dogs. I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, every canine unit's out there, they got really deep tinted windows on to protect the dog. But when I have a young mother that comes into my shop and wants to protect her newborn baby, I have to say, no, I can't do that. Well, you know, I was surprised to know that uh, those even those baby shades, which you can buy yes. everywhere, those are illegal if you're in a passenger, like a regular car. Yes, that's true. Yeah, they come projectiles in a car accident. Okay, now that makes sense. So you, you probably, if you're looking to prevent that, you'd probably prefer tint. But well, Mark, Absolutely. let me ask you this. Don't, yeah. they, don't they make some kind of a clear uh, anti-shatter thing you can put over your windshield well, so the glass doesn't spray everywhere? And all safety, all vehicle glass is safety glass, so oh, okay. that's not really a reasonable well, argument. Well, consider safety glass as tempered glass, and we've all seen car accidents where the glass explodes. When you get hit in a car accident, that piece of glass can come at you at a rate over 200 miles an hour. That's why people but, are digging glass out of their face for years. And that you, happens you know, with tinted years. windows as well. It doesn't happen with tinted windows. Actually, when you tint your windows, it'll actually protect you from actually being ejected out of the vehicle in a rollover fatality. Well, that's on why average, you're supposed to, to wear federal... your seatbelt. If you have your seatbelt on, it's not an issue. Because seatbelts never fail. I mean, no, they well, don't. Let me not ask you a question. To, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I've never seen a seatbelt fail, Mark. I have not a friend of mine right personally. now that is. Uh, Everyone's got a friend that's heard something, but I've never met that friend. I come by my shop. Directly. I'll introduce you. Mark, are there states in the in this uh, fine country of ours that don't allow any kind of tinting at all? No. Okay. Well, we there, is an there is an acceptable level of window tint in the state of Minnesota, right? Right. You know, what this boils down to is these guys want to, at 50%, they feel they can't get enough people to buy their product at 50%, so they want to make it 35 so they can sell it. Well, it's mm -hmm. not, to, but, you know, to, to be and, fair to Mark Roski, you know, yeah. I, I certainly see your point, but it's not just these guys. I mean, obviously, there's a market for it, right? I mean, right. they're not, there's people that want that just for it looks cool or for the uh, the practical reasons that Mark's talking about. No, I understand that, but I guess what you have to consider is, 
You look at the totality of circumstance. When Mark went into the window tint business, he knew the rules. My dad has been a small business owner for 30 years. He sells what he can sell. He does his business within the laws. He doesn't lobby the legislature because he doesn't feel he can't make enough money. He operates within the rules. So I, I guess I, and our concern, I wear a bulletproof vest and carry a gun because every now and then somebody tries to kill a police officer. And our concern is when you reduce our ability to see in that vehicle, it creates a more dangerous situation. And our concern is for that police, so police officers, troopers, sheriff's deputies, go home to their wives and, and husbands and children at the end of their shift. Yeah, I can see that. Well, I would it argue also that to me. protection for the citizens in the vehicle is against every bit what? as important as protecting our officers. Against what? Uh, protection against ejection, what? Ejection, rollover accidents. Damn, yeah, well, that's where you wear your seatbelt. And you can also be harmed and injured severely by breaking glass. Um, just getting in the car accidents by increasing reaction times by being able to visually see better out so of your vehicle. So night you're going to see better through a tinted window. Actually, yeah, there's a lot of glare from big trucks when you're driving a small car. At night when it's windows. pitch black out, though, I, I had uh, illegally tinted windows in a vehicle at one point in time, and I couldn't see crap at night. It well, was the worst asking, idea. Yeah, the not asking to go really, you know, you're talking about limousine films or really dark films. We're not talking about that. We're talking about a 35% film. And again, the, the, I'm not making this stuff up. The Federal uh, Safety Administration did the studies, and they actually concluded that your operation of the vehicle, nighttime, daytime, rain, dry weather it is better with a 35% or darker film than without film. Mark, wow. Mark, I'm curious about your, your, your stance against the acceptable levels of window tint because from my experience driving around this area, business must be booming. Well, it, it's, uh, we're doing okay. I mean, but the, a lot of the industry has left town. Um, you just step over any border. A lot of them set up tamp in, in Hudson, for instance, where they can operate without restriction by the law. No, aren't yeah, actually, you the law in Wisconsin is 35% <laughs> the rear windows, 50% the front windows. Which is darker than the state of Minnesota. Yeah. Right. Aren't you able to um, still install, or, you know, tint the windows darker than what's legal if somebody signs a piece of paper waiving you from responsibility? It, what are the laws there? No, they changed the law uh, a couple of years ago now that uh, we can actually be held criminally responsible for the installation of the film. Oh, that's, that's true. Really? Okay. Even if they sign something saying, yeah, we realize right. this is illegal. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then um, w why is it that a truck can have tinted windows in the back, but a car can't? It's is that, of, is that a kind loophole? Of a it's kind or? of a long story. It, it started back in those, kind of came forward from the 50s when they were trying <laughs> to reduce and get better fuel economy out of the vehicles. Trucks had to run two large air conditioning units in order to cool them. So they found by putting the darker glass in the rear of them, they could downsize the air conditioners in them to get better fuel economy. Uh huh. So Wait, they, it just, that, it just that rule just kind of stayed. It just kind of stayed. There is no law in the books right now really about SUVs, MPVs, crossovers. They've by default been kind of thrown into the truck van category. Could you come over to my place and uh, tint my bathroom mirror so I look tan when I get out of the shower? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, do you guys do that outside of car stuff? Can you tint other things? We do. The largest growing part of our industry, I mean, Solar controlled window films are the most energy efficient thing you can do cost wise to improve your uh, utility bills on your on your home or business. So oh, cool, you can tint your windows on your house? Homes and business, yep. Yeah. Can I put some spinners oh, on it someplace? Yeah. I want my house to stand out. Pimp yeah. your house. Well, uh, Roski and Mark from reading text messages from our listening audience, it's about even. Yeah, yeah I, I was going to say the same thing. It's split down the middle, and, and Roski, you bring up a good point. As you know, I mean, I have a large law enforcement contingent in my family, and I worry about them, too. Right. Uh, whether or not tint makes a difference, I don't know. But if there's anything out there to make them safer, you know, obviously I'd be for that. And I'd like, to, I'd like to point this out. I am not, and yeah, I'm not against window tint. I think 50% is a reasonable amount. In my wife's vehicle, one of, not your company, but I have her t windows tinted to 50%. I think it does make a difference, but I think that's a reasonable amount. I don't think it needs to be any darker. So I'm not anti-window tint. I just think that the 50% is uh, where it should be. So we can see in the vehicle uh, reasonably, and you can also enjoy the benefits of having a little bit reduced light in that vehicle. And again, just so we can uh, but never have to bring up the subject of window tint again, the by law, any shop now in town, they won't be able to go over the, uh, the the illegal numbers. So everything you get from this day forward should be well, legal, correct? Well, and, and we appreciate reputable, reputable businesses like Mark's that 
follow the law and stay within the law because there's a lot that don't. Okay. And we, we stop a lot of cars with illegal tint, and they say, well, I, you know, this, you know, Joe Blow's tint shop did this, and it's down to like 8%, and it's like, uh, you know, opaque practically. Right. Okay. Well, let, let's go down just real quick then the law, okay? Go because ahead. here's some common questions we get. I'll, mm-hmm. I'll start with this one. If you buy a vehicle and it's got the illegal window tint on it, let's say you get it from a dealership. I don't know what the laws are there, but let's say that happens. Right. Are you responsible for changing that if you purchase the vehicle that way? It's illegal for the dealership to sell the vehicle with illegal thumb on it. Okay, yes. what if you bought it out of state? Then oh. once you bring it into the state, you'll be Then you have to accountable. change it. You okay, so that's it. your responsibility. It, it's the owner's responsibility either way, but the dealer can be in trouble if they sell it with the illegal tint on it as well. Well, that's, that's one common question we get. The other right. one is then, so what are the specific rules for your vehicle? The exact percentages, if anybody hasn't picked up on it already. It's total light transmission of 50% plus or minus three. So technically, uh, you got 47% or higher. Okay. I'm trying How to think, Nick, what else do we get? What are the other questions? I think we've covered uh, pretty much every question that could be asked on this topic. And then in the back, it doesn't matter how dark you go. If it's a truck, truck or yeah, van, truck, van yeah. SUV, you can go as dark as you want. Mm-hmm. And what uh, would you say, Mark, in your opinion, would be an acceptable level? Let's say you want to see out of your truck windows in the back at nighttime. Well, I, I, mean, uh, I would be happy as an industry. We'd be happy with just a 35 percent law. On the on, entirely on a car, um, okay, which That's, I think is more than reasonable. The police officer can see that just fine. Their takedown lights at night make it virtually invisible. Um, but the, I mean, the fairness and fairness, you you have to you have the argument of if I, if I can buy an SUV with dark tinted windows in the back, I should be able to do the same thing to my car. So just because somebody decides to buy a Prius to have good gas mileage instead of driving his Escalade around, you know, he should be able to do the same thing to protect himself and his belongings in his vehicle. So I hear you. if, if uh, listeners are on either side of the argument, what do they do? Where do they go, Mark? To If, somebody's, if somebody agrees with everything you're saying yeah, and they, they want to get involved, they want to change the law. Oh, yeah. We've got a website set up. Uh, it's the Minnesota Window Film Association. Uh, you can go to fairtentlaw.com. Um, shoot me an email if you have any questions or anything. Write your legislator. Tell them how you feel about the law. I once worked with a guy who drove a Chevette. The Chevy Chevette, remember that tiny little thing? My that grandma the, had one, okay. yeah. He, nice had a, he had a Chevrolet Chevette, and uh, on the back window, which was tinted, there was a sticker that said, Mustang. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> I love that when people do that. That's pretty cool. Or they'll put like an off-road sticker on uh, like a Corolla. Yeah, you know? exactly. <laughs> when I grow up, I'm going to be a Hemi. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah exactly. Stuff. Hey, Mark, we appreciate you coming in. Thank you yeah, very thanks much. Thanks both you guys for doing this. Yeah. You know, I yes, mean, thanks, guys. Best of luck in I hate efforts. confrontation. <laughs> and Roski, as always, we want you to be safe out there. We All appreciate right. you coming in. Thanks. Right, Roski thank P. Coltrane from the Minnesota State Patrol. See you guys. Sorry we didn't get to any phone calls or anything like that.